and welcome to West Branch. Glad you're here. Wanted to show you around a little bit. What do you think? Pretty neat, huh? I'll tell you more about this in a little bit, but just wanted to give you a little update of what's been going on in the ministry. I think you would guess, probably, that it's been a unique time for us as it has been for a lot of people with the COVID-19 situation going on and so forth. We've had our, a men's retreat canceled in the last few months, senior trips, different things like that that we uh, would have had going on. But uh, we've just been continuing on and trying to do what we can. Actually, today was the first time I had preached since uh, March the 1st, three months. And that's very unusual for me as well. It's kind of a unique time right now because due to not having so much of the camps and meetings and so forth, of course, we're being very careful financially. Let me just stop and say thank you. By the way, this video being made for a couple of our supporting churches and thank you friends in Tucson and you friends in Illinois as well for your support and especially been helpful during this time as it always is. But we've had some unique times. We've been uh, canceling things and being very careful with uh, finances. On the other hand, we've also started the building process for our dining hall. So in one case, we're questioning every purchase, and in another case, we're signing papers for a $750,000 project. And so that, of course, is because of God's provision, and we're very excited we've been able to continue doing some things, especially here on the property during this time. Well, with our spring events being canceled, that came into summer and put summer in question a little bit. Uh, we did move everything out of the month of June, and so we uh, were supposed to have a ladies event at the end of this week that would be the 5th and 6th of june from when i'm recording this and that's that's actually been postponed until july or junior camp later on in june we postponed that till july as well and as of right now we are hopeful with the lord's help that we'll be able to get in uh, teen camps and junior camp and our ladies summer getaway in the month of july June the 25th is when our summer staff arrives here at West Branch, and so we're looking forward to them coming as well. But what do you think of this rodeo corral? This is something that we've been excited about. Kind of took two concepts that we had back in Flagstaff and put them together, a stage front that we can use for skits, as well as the rodeo corral for our camper rodeos, things like pig chases and tug of war and those types of things that will go on here. We'll use this a lot for activities as well and even beyond that due to the COVID situation we'll probably have more outside services this summer than normally we do and you saw with the bleachers that we have here that uh, that'll give us a great venue for that also we thank the Lord for the volunteers that got us in our way to put this up uh, one has been a gentleman that does missionary construction projects he lives about an hour and a half away from here now and he spent weeks day after day coming up here to work on this of course our own staff as well and then a, there's a pastor who arrives later today to finish up a few more things some railings upstairs and so forth to complete it he's this will be his third week of time volunteering here and many others uh, ironically i didn't really because of the COVID situation feel good about appealing to folks to come in and help us but God just kept sending us people to help, and we thank the Lord for that. Also sending us the funds to be able to do this. When it's all said and done, this project and other things we had to do to even get here through the mud and so forth will be about $10,000, and we thank the Lord for his providing that. Hey, and I mentioned the dining hall as well. That's pretty exciting. We've been wanting to get this going uh, for a while. We have a, a donor who is promised to build the whole building if we could take care of the infrastructure. 
we've decided and found out we can build it in two phases and one phase will just get the building up and be able to occupy it as a better auditorium and then we'll work on the kitchen and dining in there uh, perhaps next year but lord willing we will have steel delivered and on the ground in july it will be erected in later july and august and uh, our plan lord willing is to have it complete by the beginning of november or so forth uh, that we could also occupy maybe even use it in part for a men's conference next march Please pray with us about that. It's very, very exciting, but of course, a lot of details. We thank the Lord for the contractor the Lord has given us. He's a Christian man. We are paying him, but he is saving us a lot of money in other places and has really been a help to coordinate these things. We have raised a lot of money towards the electrical, which we've already set up for the building, uh, fire suppression. That's where we're also seeing that we're going to have to have that completed before we can occupy. And we actually won't have to do the sanitation and water for it until the second phase. But uh, if you'll just be praying, there probably are some expenses we're going to hit that we're not quite prepared for. So we're asking the Lord to provide uh, for that need uh, very soon so that we can keep everything moving. And our construction season is not as long as some places. Uh, when we started this project, it was mud, mud, mud everywhere in March. Very difficult to get around, but right now it's good and dry, and it should be great for building, and it shouldn't be a conflict with our summer camps as well. So please be praying for us about that. Now that's all the building. We're excited, but it's not just building. It's, of course, ministry. When we couldn't have some of our camps and retreats, the Lord put on our heart an idea called the Bible Roundup Challenge to use a devotional for junior boys and girls, younger kids, to get in the habit of reading their Bible. So we put that out and 90 kids took up the challenge. If they would read through their Bible every day, at least 24 days through the month of May, then we would give them free Chick-fil-A. And that was provided through a lady in our church in Flagstaff that works at Chick-fil-A. And uh, we've already sent out, I think, 26 cards so far to the kids who have accomplished that. We're trying to encourage the rest to get that finished up uh, very, very soon. So we're excited. That's been a blessing. And furthermore, I didn't even expect this, but there were three kids who have been saved through this program. They read their Bible and they read about Jesus uh, suffering for us and for uh, our salvation. And they started asking questions of mom or, or somebody near them. And the end result was that they got saved and two were brothers. And so that's been very exciting. Uh, all, all three of those are from Arizona, and we thank the Lord for that. On top of the Bible Roundup Challenge, we also have our annual Southwest Youth Challenge. That's a different program. That's for teenagers to stay involved in church. And we give a prize, several hundred dollars, to the winning church. And Open Door is in that contest, has been for years, and uh, other churches from around the Southwest. So that's starting up here next week is when that gets going, very close in time to get that started. And then we've got our camps, as I say. So please be in prayer. We're going through a lot of work and effort just to be in a spot where we are safe to have camp, where we are doing what we're being asked to do and what is recommended to us to do. But even beyond that, we want it to be safe. We realize this whole pandemic has been a real issue. We have loved ones that we've uh, lost or have been loved ones of friends of ours that have passed on or been greatly affected at least in both cases and so we realize it's a serious situation we take that very seriously so pray with us for the safety for our effectiveness especially because we don't want to just have camp we want to have camp where God is working and sees many young people's lives changed it's happened so many times before and that's what we're praying for so hey thank you so much for your continued support it really means a lot to us. It's been especially a help. It always is, but it's been especially encouragement in these last few months that have been a little more difficult in that regard. And uh, just continue praying for us, and we thank the Lord for you. God bless you. Hello, friends at Open Door Baptist Church. Hope you are doing well. We're going to be taking our Bible today and turning to 2 Samuel chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22, if you'd like to find that. And let me just give you a little orientation to where we're at. We are at West Branch, 
And this is the oldest building on our camp property. It's called the Bach House, which is a tribute to some volunteers we had here for three years who did a lot of renovation on this building. We think this building goes back at least to the 1920s, just based on some evidence that we have found. And behind me, you see our theme for last summer, which was Never Fear. That's uh, come to our minds and seemed to be quite appropriate as we've considered what's gone on over the last several months and uncertainty and so forth uh, in our day and in our time. Uh, not long from now, we'll be putting up this year's banner, which our theme is Our God Reigns. And we're looking forward to camp coming up uh, soon and seeing some young people there from the church as well. Well, we're in 2 Samuel chapter 22, and we're looking at verse number 31 as our text today. And if you'd follow along while I read that, the Bible says, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. If you've been around church, the things of the Lord for any length of time, I suspect that you have a favorite song, a favorite hymn. If you uh, peg me down on my favorite, I think I would go with Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It, Redeemed by the Blood of the Lamb. If I had a second favorite, or maybe just a blip off of first, I call it my 1A uh, favorite song, it would be the song, My Savior First of All. When my life's work is ended, I cross the swelling tide, goes on to talk about I shall know him when I see uh, the smile on his face, when I see uh, the print of the nails in his hand. It's a great song, and it's a wonderful truth thinking about what is awaiting for us in heaven. But what makes it even more interesting to me is the person who wrote it. That was Fanny Crosby. And she, of course, was blind. So reading the words of a song that are all about what we will see in heaven is particularly moving when you consider that it was written by a blind woman. Well, here in 2 Samuel chapter 22, we find a song as well. This was written not by David Crosby, but by King David. And back in verse number one, the Bible says that David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hands of Saul. When there came a day where God gave David complete victory, and his promised ascent to the kingdom, then David wrote this song. And of all the stanzas of this song, if you consider each verse of stanza, it's quite a long song in that regard. But if you consider each verse of stanza, then I think the 31st verse provides for us the most amazing stanza. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. What this verse teaches us is simply this. Our confidence is built by meditating on God's personal care for our lives. Our confidence through life is built up when we meditate upon God's personal care for our lives. And that's what this verse describes. It says, as for God, you want to know what God is, who God is, what God's doing in your life, Here's how you can characterize it in these three ways. Number one, his way is perfect. Number two, his word is reliable. Number three, he is protection. Let's consider those for the next several minutes. Number one, the Bible says, as for God, his way is perfect. Now, when it talks about a way, it conjures up the idea of a road, of a path. Uh, perhaps for them, it was thinking more like foot traffic. For us, we think of roads and ways more for vehicle traffic. But regardless, it has the idea of a roadway. But of course, it's not just talking about some interstate somewhere being perfect. It's talking about God's way, God's path, God's course for our life. And furthermore, the Bible says that God's way is perfect. Now, that can conjure up all sorts of objections from a lot of people when you stop and consider how many things in our life are far from perfect. Have you thought about that? It doesn't take a lot of thought. We deal with health issues, we deal with financial concerns, we deal with, with the relational matters, all sorts of things that we deal with that are far from what we would estimate as being 
perfect. But the word perfect does not mean without error in the sense of without any problems. The word perfect means complete. It means that God's way, God's path, his course for our life is complete in every way. We do a lot of travel, of course, as an evangelist. This put us in a lot of different locations across the country. I grew up in the Midwest, was farmland, and like the biggest body of water near me was Pope Creek. Okay, so that's, that's where I grew up. But I get to some of these other places where you're close to the ocean, you're close to a gulf, you're close to one of the Great Lakes, even, perhaps. It's always fascinated me how long it takes to get from a relatively close point to the water to an actual spot where you can step out of your vehicle and put your feet in the water. You know that? Like, oh, let's go to the beach. Well, how far is the water as the crow flies? Oh, maybe five miles. How long will it take us to get there? 45 minutes. What in the world's the deal with that? Well, it's because the paths kind of meander and not all of the roads end up getting there. Sometimes we've traveled and said, well, there's, remember one time we were near Lake Michigan. There's Lake Michigan. Let's just try to find some place to get off and stick our feet in. Could never come up with this spot. I'm sure there was one somewhere. Probably cost money. I don't know. But we couldn't get there because the paths were not complete. We've lived out here in Arizona for over 20 years. Do a lot of travel in and around Phoenix. Of course, we come down to where you folks are. That's the way we generally come through the Phoenix, one way or the other. And around Phoenix, you have a number of different interstates. When we moved out here, you had, of course, I-17 and I-10, but they were in the process of building the Loop 101. And I remember one time pulling out an atlas. You remember those? I pulled out an atlas and saw that on the atlas, the Loop 101 was nearly complete around Scottsdale, the northeast side of the valley. So I thought, you know, on this map, it's a solid line and a solid line, just a couple of dots there in the middle. That surely must be faster than trying to go through the middle of Phoenix and up I-17 from where we were at. So we're heading up uh, Loop 101, we're in Scottsdale, and it's going great until just about where we got to that dotted line all of a sudden. All the traffic goes down from four lanes to three lanes to two lanes to one lane to one very slow exit lane off the ramp to a couple of side streets for maybe half a mile until we could get back onto Loop 101 where it was complete. You know how much time we lost? At least 30 minutes. That was a frustration. What was the problem? The road wasn't complete. The pathway did not get us everywhere we wanted to go. West Branch is here just five minutes off of Interstate 40. If you were to travel 1,600 miles to the east, you could get to the Bill Rice Ranch in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Literally, once you get on 40, you don't need to exit 40 until you get on Interstate 840 in Tennessee to bypass Nashville, and that will take you, again, within five minutes of the Bill Rice Ranch. So, in a 1,600-mile drive, 10 minutes of the drive is all that is not on Interstate 40 or Interstate 840. That's pretty complete. But a number of years ago in Oklahoma, over the Arkansas River, there was a tragedy that took place right before some folks were coming out from Tennessee to help us at camp. One of the bridges over the Arkansas River collapsed. Maybe you remember that story. I don't know. It probably been 15, 18 years ago. And it was quite a detour for the folks coming to get around that. The problem was that the road was not complete. And that's how life seems sometimes. It's like everything is going along smoothly and then just everything falls out from underneath of you. It's at times like that where you have to stop and remember that regardless of how things look around you, the Bible declares that as for God, his way is perfect. It's complete. It does not leave you hanging. As a matter of fact, one of the great passages of Scripture for that is one that many would know from Romans chapter 8, where the Bible says in verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Now listen to this. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, 
and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Now it's a fascinating verse because it talks about different stages, if you will, of our salvation, things God has provided for to make certain that we get to heaven. It talks about predestination, calling, it talks about justification. All of these are things that have been accomplished in our life. But the very last of these is it says, them he also glorified. That's listed in the past tense. But for us who have not yet gotten to heaven, we haven't experienced that yet. That's when we, we eventually will get to heaven. Our sin will be removed forevermore. We'll receive a glorified body. So why does it put all of these different stages, God calling us, us receiving that, him justifying us and making us righteous before God, and glorification, why does he put them all in the past tense? And here's what I'm convinced. It's because to God it's as good as done. Because God's way is complete. It's perfect. God doesn't ever get two-thirds the way through somebody's salvation and then mess it up. And then drop the ball. Then leave somebody hanging. And that is why Romans 8 was given to us to give us confidence. It goes on to say, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Verse 35 says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword? It goes on, Nay, and all these things. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. There is nothing that can keep us from God's stated will for our lives as Christian, which is the eventual glorification of each of us as we live forever with him in heaven. That is the wonderful fact of God's way of being perfect. You say, well, I get that about heaven, but what about things on this earth? Well, friend, if you can trust God with all of your eternity, then you can certainly trust God with his way for your life here on this earth. In Romans chapter 10, verse 11, the Bible says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. The word ashamed really is something that is done to us. It, it, it would not be unjust to the passage to say that whosoever believeth on him shall not be shamed or put to shame. The idea is that when you put your faith in Christ, you can depend upon him to complete everything that needs to be done. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. And that verse in 1 Thessalonians is talking primarily, again, about our salvation and our getting to heaven. You can rest upon that. And again, if in the meanwhile there are things that come into our life that do not seem like they are perfect, we just stop and remember that God's way is complete. His way is perfect. It is absolutely perfect. You know, I think about a, a friend of mine, some of you would know him, but uh, several weeks ago during this whole pandemic, he uh, contracted COVID-19 and he passed away. He's been a long time servant of the Lord, been greatly used here in Arizona. And I think about a man like him, and if I'm not thinking carefully, I am tempted to say, oh, isn't that terrible? He is a man who's been serving the Lord and then all of a sudden his life was snatched from him before it could be completed. But do you think for a second that God was surprised about the home going of his servant? Do you think for a second that in any way, shape, or form it was not what God intended? Uh, I don't mean to minimize it. And we've personally reached out to his wife and and kids that we know and, and those that would have been close to offer our condolences. I, I don't say there's not a great sadness for us. But don't ever for a second think that God's way in his life was thwarted because of some disease. Because God's way is perfect. It's complete. In the passage that we read in verse number 33 of 2 Samuel 22, the Bible says, God is my strength and power, and he maketh his way perfect. And that it's a good reminder that it's really not so much 
if I just do what I want to do, then God will make it perfect so much as it is me submitting to God's will for my life and knowing that God will then complete it. He makes my way his way when I'm in submission, and he makes it complete and he makes it perfect. So, one, his way is perfect. Secondly, his word is reliable. His word is reliable. The Bible says in verse 31, As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. And the word tried has the idea of tested. It has the idea of somebody who would work with metals that would put it through the fire. Maybe a silversmith, some metal smith would put the, the, the metal through the fire to remove impurities to make it as strong as it possibly can be. And so the Bible says of God's word that his word is perfect. It is tried. In uh, Proverbs 30, it says, Every word of God is sure. Uh, it is exactly what God intended it to be. Looking here for Psalm 12 and verse 6, where the Bible says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth purified seven times. So God's word is perfect. It's reliable because it's been tried. Now, what that does not mean is that God's word has gone out there to everybody and lots of people have tried it and that proves that you can trust it. That is an encouragement when we see other people put God's word to test and it works for them. But this is not talking about people trying it. It's saying that God has tried it. The word of the Lord is tried. It means that God tried it. Now, it doesn't mean that God created his word and he saw there was imperfection and so he fixed it. Now, that's not the idea. That's overthinking it. It's God's word is perfect. And when God sent out his word, it went out, as it were, with the seal of his approval so that you can know you can trust it. It works. I love Isaiah chapter 55. The Bible says, God speaking, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but it watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it make it seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be, God says, that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I send it. Now, a lot of times we hear that verse used in reference to the idea of when a preacher proclaims God's word that it will not return unto him void. But it, in other words, whenever the Bible is preached, it will accomplish something in people's lives. And I think that is generally true, though certainly if a preacher had sin in his life, that would hinder the word of God from going forth in power. But actually what Isaiah 55 is talking about is not when the Bible goes forth out of a preacher's word, it's talking about when God sent it forth from his mouth, his word. Here's the idea. God says, when I sent my word out, my word, the Bible, all of his words, when I sent that out, it's reliable. You can take it to the bank. You can trust it. It is not going to return void. In other words, if you will take what God has said in his word and you put it to work in your life, it's going to work for you just like it would work for anybody. Because God's word is reliable. A few minutes ago I mentioned to you uh, Romans chapter 10 and verse 11, Whosoever uh, puts his trust shall trust in the Lord, believeth in the Lord, shall not be ashamed or put to shame. That's the idea here again, is that we are not put to the worst. We don't, uh, we don't suffer embarrassment because we trusted God. It works out because God's word is reliable. When I was a kid, I loved playing sports and especially basketball. And I was on a team, I think this would go back even into probably elementary school, upper elementary. And we, we had a team, we didn't play very many games, uh, three or four, maybe when I was in fifth grade, sixth grade, something like that. And usually just at half time of, of the of the varsity game going on, but we had several practices. And so a friend of mine and I lived just a few miles away from each other out in the country. So our moms would take turns picking us up from school, uh, from practice. 
And one night after practice, you know, kids were getting picked up. We were all ready to go. We were waiting by the door. It was winter. It was cold. So we were not willing to stand outside. And finally, all the kids had gone. All the coaches had gone. The only one that was left in the building besides the two of us was the janitor. And I remember him coming to us and saying, boys, I got to lock up. I got to go. Is your ride coming or is your ride not coming? Well, they're supposed to. And it was my friend's mom's turn to pick us up. Uh, apparently, that's what we understood. Well, there had been a miscommunication. And eventually, my mom showed up to pick us up when she realized we were past due at home and figured out what had happened. But we were kind of left hanging. We were left shamed. We were trusting in the ride for somebody to pick us up and it, it wasn't coming through for us. But that's not how it is with God. It's not how it is with God's word. When you read God's word, regardless of how it appears in your circumstances, you just have to stop and remind yourself that God's way is reliable. His word is reliable. You know, we oftentimes lack the confidence that we should because we have not stopped to meditate enough on these truths. Number one, that God's way is perfect. You may see some things in your life and you say, this does not look like this is going to work out right. God's way is perfect. You may be looking at some principles of God's word that you're trying to implement into your life and say, but I thought if I did this, everything would work out great. Well, there's all sorts of factors. There's all sorts of reasons. But one that is never true is that God's word failed because his word is reliable. And then third, we see in this verse, the Bible says, His way is perfect, the word of the Lord is tried, and thirdly, he is a buckler to all them that trust in him. His way is perfect, his word is reliable, he is protection. Do you notice that each statement becomes more personal? Do you see how God's way, that's personal, God has a way for generally mankind, but he has a way for us individually. But even more specifically, his word, the words he spoke, that's more personal, but then it talks about he is protection. He is protection. He, he, not something about him, but he is a buckler to all them that trust in him. Proverbs 30 and verse 5, I mentioned every word of God is pure. He is a shield to them that trust in him. That's what a buckler is. A buckler is a shield. So these are two verses in the Bible that say the same concept that he personally God himself is a shield to those that trust in him. I picture it like a dad with his toddler child. And all of a sudden somebody comes in the room, the toddler doesn't know that child, uh, does not know that person. And so what does the toddler do? Runs around behind the back of dad and kind of peeks out from the side as if to say, if I can stay behind dad, I will be safe. And that's really the concept. In that case, the dad is the protection for the child. And in our case, God himself is our protection. So it means that not only do we have to be confident about his way, and we have to be confident about his word, but we have to have a relationship with God that is such, that is up to date, that is fresh, that is vibrant, that is good fellowship with God on a daily basis so that we can enjoy his protection. In life. And again, I'm not saying that with God we avoid all trouble. With God we avoid all problems. We still have pain, we still have sickness, we still have uh, questions, concerns. Um, there's, there's hardly a day in our life where there isn't something that is perhaps on our minds that we're thinking about, that we're concerned about. But we understand that even if that is true, we still have God's protection. And we still have God's involvement in our life. So why do we sometimes feel unprotected? Well, there's an interesting story in 2 Chronicles. It's about the king Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a great king, one of the best that the southern tribes of Israel ever had. He brought the nation back to God. He led them through some amazing things. He saw a miraculous victory over the Assyrians when the angel of the Lord came into the camp, destroyed them at the request, if you will, of Hezekiah praying and asking God. 
Hezekiah saw God miraculously heal his body, give him 15 more years of life so that he could continue the, the line, the seed, and have his son Manasseh be born. Uh, Hezekiah was a great king, but he really did better when things were not going well. I trust the Lord than when things started going well. Because when he just be, got to that area where he had gone through all the difficulties and he had all of the prosperity, uh, he didn't fare quite as well. And here's what it says about him. Verse 27 of 2 Chronicles 32. And Hezekiah had exceeding much riches and honor, and he made himself treasuries for silver and for gold and for precious stones and for spices and for shields, and for all manner of pleasant jewels. So it's talking about he made all these treasuries, these storage locations. Basically, uh, everybody takes their stuff and puts it in storage today. That's what Hezekiah was doing. But he was doing it with his gold and his silver and his precious stones and his spices. And those all are precious things that sound like a good, a good idea to put into safe storage. But then the Bible says that he put his shields in the storage. That seems weird to me. It, it seems to me that he was anticipating that his battles were over. And can I just say to you, when you get to the place in life where you think your battles are over, then you forget that you still need God and his protection. And you can experience God's protection for your day, every day of life, as long as you remember that as long as we live on this earth, we will be in a battle. We have an enemy, the devil. We have an enemy, the flesh. We have an enemy, the worldly system. And we've got to keep up our guard, not in fear, but in confidence that God himself is our protection. You look, you can have a confident life. You absolutely can. But you only limit God's protection when you put him in storage. So don't do that. You can be confident. And I just want to ask you this question today. Where does your confidence lack? Is your confidence lacking in God's way? Or are you thinking, I just don't know if this is going to work out. I just don't know if this is going to complete. As for God, his way is perfect. Maybe your confidence is lacking in his word. Well, I see what God said in his word, but it just seems to me that this is the way it's actually happening. His word is reliable. As for God, the word of the Lord is tried. So, well, I just don't sense God's protection in my life. Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So if we lack a sense of God's protection, it's possible that we have actually stepped away from the active use of that buckler, of that shield. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him. You can have confidence. You can have confidence in God. His way is perfect. His word is reliable. And he is a shield. He is our protection. Friend, you can have confidence in God. Now let me just say this as one final aside. This maintaining a fellowship with God can only come when you've started a relationship with God. And the Bible is clear about that fact that that is only through placing your faith in Jesus Christ, what he did when he died on the cross of Calvary, he rose from the dead. If you will recognize that you are a sinner and that you cannot save yourself from your sins, but you put your faith in Jesus Christ to save you, the Bible promises eternal life. We read earlier Romans 10, 11, but 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you put your faith in Jesus Christ, what he did for you, you can be saved. And if there's any question, any doubt in your mind about what that means or how that can be accomplished so simply, then you need to contact Pastor Kramer at this church and talk with somebody and let them help you from God's reliable word so you can know for sure you're on your way to heaven. But friend, if you already have that peace, if you already know that about eternity, then I just remind you, you can trust God right now as well. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. God bless you.